Oh, he hit a dog. No, I didn't want to see it. Jamie, my stuff, here we go, riding around. Riding around, here we go. Got an intersection, got some potholes right there. We got it, oh, is this like a dog situation? Oh, please don't get hit, no. So, animals, I don't, I don't remember the psychology of it, but animals think two-wheeled, lots of noise types things look like a threat. So some animals do chase it. And it's not just dogs, it's cats. Think of big cats, think of big animals like buffalo you see when people ride through Yellowstone, uh, bears, you know, just anything. So animals just see two-wheeled with noise. It kind of looks like an animal to them. So when you see something like that, just try your best not to get bit. Um, it's up to you if you want to try your best to allow the dog not to get hurt or the animal not to get hurt. But remember, here's the thing. At the end of the day, you're the, you're the priority. So do what you feel is necessary. For me, I'm going to try my best to uh, prevent the animal from getting hurt. I don't like seeing animals. I don't like seeing any living organism get hurt. I really don't. Uh, Dark Sprocket, new member, by the way. Woo! What does TBI mean? Traumatic brain injury. So a traumatic brain injury ranges from a mild, 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 mild concussion to basically getting your brain blown off out of your head and stuff. That's pretty much what it is. Uh, bruising on the brain, damage to the brain, anything that's caused by a traumatic event, which would be an acute thing like falling down and hitting your head, getting punched in the head, getting in a motorcycle crash. Uh, you can have a brain injury without a traumatic in, uh, incident. So you can have a stroke that's caused by a medical thing. You can have an aneurysm that's caused by a medical thing. You can have a brain disease like, like Alzheimer's or dementia, which is caused by a medical situation. And that damages the brain beyond repair, like a traumatic brain injury could, but it wasn't traumatic. So a traumatic brain injury is caused by something traumatic and it's a brain injury. And it ranges from a concussion to your brain leaving your body. Okay. Hopefully that answered your question. Uh, when it comes to uh, motorcycle crashes, always anticipate and always expect some form of brain injury, whether it's a very mild concussion, which will heal uh, or should heal completely, or something super aggravated to where you never re recover. Here we go. Intersection, lots of craziness. We've got turn signals. Let's not pass right there. And the rider's excessive speed caused the situation. Ah, this is just the hazardous area. Like crazy. Whoa! His left arm. His left arm. His left arm. His left arm. Let's see it. Let's see it. Let's see it. Let's see it. See your hand. I see some flaying of the flesh already. Let's see it. No, let's see it. Maybe not. Maybe not. Oh, he hit a dog. No, I didn't want to see it. Where do you think you have protection on your palms? Or I just answered it. Where do you think you have protection on gloves? Right on your palms. He blurs that out. Road rash. Let's take a quick look at this. Let's take a quick look at this. This is going to be demonetized. So if you want to support the channel, uh, we do have the ebook available for the Smart Rider basic training. Um, use code SMARTRIDER. We're only using 500 of those coupon codes. You get 15% off 
Uh, this is probably going to demonetize, so you know what? I'm going to throw up the Smart Rider basic training ebook on this one. Come on, new riders. If you want to know how to ride effectively and smart, make sure you grab the Smart Rider basic training ebook. I talk about how to plan your ride, what the Smart Rider principles are all about, the color code chart, what patterns to look for, how to rescue another rider. Anyways, you got to just check it out. Make sure you click the link in the description. There's a discount code. It's the cheapest it's ever going to be. Only 500 people are going to be able to get the code, so make sure you grab yours now. All right, let's get back into the video. So what we have here is you can barely see it. Let me know if you can see this. So this is going to be like, you know, his tan skin, right? This is all his tan skin. What we have right here, the obvious, that's level two. That's level two road rash right there. So that's your nerve endings exposed. Your nerve endings are exposed and like started to get shaved off. Okay. So that's really painful. That's really painful. Now, if you see the difference between this area and like this area, this area right here in the middle, that is level one road rash. And you can see it a little bit more like right here, how it's like dark. There's dark right there. So like this is the outline. So this area that's in between. That is level one road rash. And that is going to be a very bad sunburn. So if you ever had a very bad, like I mean very bad, not just a normal one, but a very bad sunburn, that's what that feels like. So it's not good. It's not, it doesn't feel good, but it's not like permanent damage. It's not going to scar. And if it does scar, it's going to be very minimal. Uh, what you have in the middle and all this area that is level two. That red stuff is level two. So that is going to be really bad. Now, this, the gouging, that's level three with a little mixture of level two involved, plus puncture wounds. So if you saw how nasty it was, it, if anybody's seen burn victims and how they have their skin just kind of falling off, that's pretty much level three. That's third degree burns, third degree, third and second degree burns, and third, third and second degree road rash. So let's see what happened exactly. Hey, rookie, can you get that? Thank you. Let's see what happens here. Ah, forgot. Sliding across the ground. That's all it took. Awesome. Dog is dead. Awesome. That's what his hand looks like right here. That's third and second degree uh, thermal and friction burns. And then we got a little puncture also. That's what third degree looks like. Looks pretty gross. It looks pretty gross. Poor dog. All because we're what? Speeding? And not wearing gear. Awesome. Pay attention, everybody. Same. Wear your gear. Pay attention. But like I said, animals, you can't predict it. So what can you do in case something like this happens? You get some gear. Be a smart rider. All right. Cool Breeze Rider. All right. Shortly after leaving Hell's Kitchen on Ortega Highway, I came across this motorcycle accident involving a Harley rider. Hey. This is when you can rescue another rider when you can rescue another rider, buddy. Okay, so we're starting to see, okay, somebody on the ground still, the bike is destroyed. We're slowly doing our assessment right here. Multiple people are showing up on uh, scene. We have traffic being blocked. We already have wildland firefighters on scene. They're typically trained as first responders. So now we're just gonna assist EMS on scene. There's nothing we can do that they can't already do but it's something that we can assist them on. And we can get our own kit out, we can get our gloves on, and we can uh, ask if they need any help and that you are medically trained in a bystander assistance. Let's go back just a little bit. I just wanted to discuss that while I was uh, watching this because that is what's going through my head as a f bystander. Now, from my perspective, okay, that's what, I mean, this is what you can do. My perspective, let's go ahead and go over that. So we're coming up here, we have an intersection, we have a big Harley on the ground, lots of debris at this spot right here, so it looks like there's an impact with another vehicle. You can actually see, let's go back just a little bit, you see the water or the, the fluids trailing off to the right, that means the vehicle is down that way, so there's another patient. 
We have one patient on the ground, left side, left lateral recumbent, helmet on, not moving. I don't know if they are breathing. I am now going into assessment mode. I'm going to get my trauma kit, start to see if there's any traffic that could kill me or kill anybody around here. I'm not worried about the bike. Let's go ahead and, oh, he moved. That's really good. So that means there is going to be some blood flow. His heart is moving because his legs won't move. There's no blood flow moving. If there's blood flow moving, I'm hoping that his lungs are still intact so he can actually utilize his lungs. And we're gonna be moving forward, we're moving forward. Now I'm gonna be asking this guy a question. Hey, is he talking? Or, you know, in fact, I'm just gonna walk over here and say, hey, are you talking? Are you good? Hey, what's your name? Um, I'd let him know that I'm uh, EMS or I have some training. I see that there's wildland. I'll start to go towards them and ask if I can assist. And that would pretty much be it. Now this right here, it looks like this was the rider previously. And now that's the rider. So there was an impact. So let's go ahead and take a look at this whole situation. Big impact right here. He's ejected right here. More than likely, he was traveling this way because that's with this view. This is him with Cool Breeze video from prior. So it looks like they were traveling the same direction. Uh, a vehicle turned left. They collided and the vehicle kept going and probably parked somewhere over here. So this right here is what I talk about when it comes to assessment and figuring out and orienting yourself to the situation and working through what could be the mechanism of injury here. Another thing you, you can put on is possibly uh, what was the speed limit? You know, is it a 45 mile an hour road? You could start giving uh, yourself an idea of how severe this could be. Now, why would the truck turn in front of this guy? You know, we talk about intentional blindness. But we have a whole set of wildland firefighters over here. There's probably a wildland fire happening over here and they're staged here and the person's just staring off to the right while making a turn, not looking for any oncoming traffic and he gets T-boned by this Harley rider. Now this Harley rider collided right here. Why is he right here? He was ejected. Probably up and over the vehicle. I'm assuming it's a, it's a car because he was able to fly up and over, maybe slam the brakes to see if there's any brake lines. Or uh, any, uh... Let's see skid marks. No, I don't see any skid marks. No skid marks, so probably just impacted it right away. But that's him on the ground, okay? So right here, big concern, park where you're safe. Make sure no traffic will hurt you. Start to remain calm, okay? Remain calm, ensure your own safety, stop any bleeding, quickly assess the severity of this incident. And right now, this is a very severe incident, not walking. So it could be a brain injury, could be spine injury, could just be leg injuries, could just be unknown of what's happening. You need to remain calm so you can assist. Looks like they're breathing, looks like they're moving, so they got blood flow. We need to monitor that, okay? Now, when it comes to any major bleeds, this is where we need to start exposing the patient, start asking questions, and start touching the patient after you get permission because they are aware, they are awake. If they're unconscious, it's implied consent. You just start working. See if you find any major bleeds. If you have a major bleed that won't stop and you see it's just bright red and it's splurting out, it's just like... Get yourself a tourniquet, especially if it's a leg or an arm. If it's in the chest, do as best you can. Try to apply some pressure, but... You're going to have some issues. You don't have any occlusive dressings or anything like that. And you're not going to be able to do much when it comes to that. When it comes to any type of bleeding in the, you know, in the neck or in the pelvis or anything, you can pack the wound. We have plenty of four by four and roll gauze in here. We also have a CPR face mask in here. If you know how to do CPR trauma shears, if you need to cut off anything. Okay. It all, every kit comes with a rescue kit or a rescue card. So you can actually follow what I was just talking about right there. But this is actually a pretty bad accident. Thankfully, there is resources on scene. These first responders probably have medical training, so they're going to handle the situation. You can assist them if they require it or if they need it. You can even ask, hey, do you need us? Do you need me to help? I am medically trained. If you like today's video, make sure you click this video right here to keep watching more. But if you want to become a smart rider, click this and grab this Smart Rider Basic Training eBook. It's gonna help you become a smart rider by planning your ride, rescuing other riders, knowing what patterns to look for, and so much more. Make sure you grab it. Link will be in the description also. I'll be seeing you around.